Hello everyone, welcome to episode 1 of Yukio Mishima's Seder Who Fell From Grace With The Sea. This is one of those uh, book club videos that I've already done with Younger. Uh, you can just look through the channel and see the Yoimisville and the Storm of Steel ones. Uh, with this book, right, the fact that many consider it to be a foundation to Mishima's catalog is understandable. Given that the ideas you see in this uh, Seder Who Fell From Grace book, these are the same ideas that uh, can be found in other uh, books by him. But there is one book, I mean, sorry, there is one uh, idea that I would like to touch up on, and that is the idea of glory, right? And, you know, glory, it can mean many things. And uh, if I were to ask you, hey, is this glory? Then, you know, you could easily say yes or no, but... If I were to ask you to explain it, right, uh, then it's it's a bit more difficult to, uh, you know, describe the definition. And there's also, act, of course, the fact that many different things, they can all be considered glorious, right? And these things can be, uh, they can seem distinct and from, from each other, but strangely enough, they all qualify as something that uh, would be glorious despite, despite all these things being different, right? And so, to put into the realm of examples, uh, winning a race with uh, modern automobiles, uh, you know, like with the uh, Formula One races or whatever, I don't exactly know how they work, uh, or a knight in shaman armor courageously fighting a dragon, can both be considered uh, glorious um, by contemporary and Asian observers. And even though they might be different, right, uh, a race car and a uh, fairy tale, Upon closer inspection, one can see that there is an underlying common denominator in that in all these examples, winning in a domain by success of chance or skill uh, that could have been lost is a prevalent theme. And this is what I think uh, factors in when something's considered glorious, right? And so one can see that there is actually a direct relationship between increasing the stakes and or the chance of losing and increase in the degree to which it qualifies as being glorious. Therefore, it can be concluded that a competitive realm with high stakes and dangerous odds is a recipe for both disaster and glory depending on the fortunes of our hero. But when one thinks about it even more, there are that which qualifies as uh, as the above, right? They, they can be, uh, you know, uh, what, did I, uh, what did I say here? It's, it's a bit difficult when... Um, with, with these book club episodes, because I don't have a script, but um, you know, when once when, yeah, so when one thinks about um, a realm with high stakes and dangerous odds, uh, you know, there, there yeah, there are uh, examples where there are high stakes and dangerous odds, but they wouldn't be considered glorious, right? At least I don't think so. So uh, when one hears of one winning the lottery or uh, scoring top grades on a mass exam. I doubt glory is a word that comes to mind. So there is a strange contradiction happening here. And what we can conclude in any case is that it is difficult to have a precise definition of glory. Despite being able to, you know, unanimously agree on whether something is glorious or not. And this is exactly where the today's episode comes in, right? Because ultimately the book examines what Nobru, the protagonist... Excuse me. <laughs> Consider, well, yeah, it, it basically examines what Nobu the protagonist considers to be glorious. And we're here to unpack uh, not only why that is, but also uh, the bigger picture regarding the significance of Nobu uh, seeing this way. So, yeah, in this uh, book club episode, um, I'm joined by a few of my friends. We're going to go over uh, how. Noburu describes being glorious and what that basically implies for the um, overall uh, over, overall story, I guess. Um, again, um, this is just more of a spontaneous conversation, so I don't exactly know where this will go. Anyways, um, yeah, so if you guys can just, uh, I don't know, uh, I, I guess a good place to start is um, just sharing your thoughts on the book, right? Because this is the first episode. And then in the second episode, uh, we can talk about something else. And in the third episode, something else. I think, I don't know yet, but I think I only have uh, three ep three or four episodes on this one. Um, yeah, so if you guys can go ahead, uh, what are your thoughts on, on this book, I guess? That's a good place to start. And then we can start shifting it towards glory.
So this is the second book I've read by Mishima. And I, I have the first one I read was Confessions of a Mask. And I have to say, the one thing that seems very consistent across his, his writing is not just the fact that, you know, he, he describes things in a very, I'd say, like, florid way. Like, he, has, he uses a lot of words to make normal, boring things interesting and beautiful and describe things in a very uh, fascinating way. But he also is a very intense writing. <laughs> Like, the Peeping Tom situation is, uh, you know, where, where the, the young boy Nobru watches uh, through a peephole his mother getting plowed by this sailor guy uh, is very similar to a lot of the stuff that pops up in Confessions of a Mask. Just this intense, either, you know, uh, descriptions of sexual lust or desire or just situations in general that are, like, so... Almost, I mean, they, they in, a, in a way they they turn you turn you off because they're so dramatic and l very lewd. Like in Confessions of a Mass, there's a part where he describes for two pages, like a, a a man, a young, attractive man being tied up and like stabbed with a knife and bleeding, and he describes that in like a very sexual way. And it's so much intense writing that you kind of have to. I found. I put the book down and picked it up like five times in those parts because I just couldn't, I had a hard time getting through it. But even though it's hard to get through, that intensity, I don't know, it gives you a feeling of, I think what sums up the whole book is glory. And it, it gives you that feeling of, for me, Shima, this is glory. And, you know, for me, maybe not so much, but I, I it gives me, his writing finds a way to transcend the barrier of this lewd stuff that he enjoys and somehow makes it feel like glory to the reader, at least in my experience. And I think that's really cool. So this idea of glory that you talk of, right, and it's it's really drawn out in this explicit scene in, in basically the opening pages of the book. Do you think that's Mishima's true idea of glory or do you think he's... Uh, so basically what I'm trying to say is does Nobru represent, accurate represent how Mishima sees glory or is Mishima purposely misrepresenting himself through Nobru because you know you have to admit uh, this is a very strange way, a strange example of uh, glory right that's why I gave the examples early on uh, beginning of this episode about how you know Glory, it's, there's no, um, it's hard to have like a fixed definition of it, but there are, um, characteristics that count towards gl glory, right? So there's, you know, what I, I think what I said was anything that's very, uh, hard to achieve and the stakes are very high, right? Then if you accomplish it, then, you know, people consider it glorious most of the times, uh, but, um, you know, this is a very strange case. I don't think anyone would see what's written in these pages as like the first thing that comes up to their mind when asked what is glorious. So do you think this is Mishima saying this is what I think glory is? Or do you think this is um, Mishima saying uh, this is a uh, messed up version? Like no brute is tr is Mishima trying to pervert his own uh, definition of glory through uh, Nobru? Because, and I think I have, to, I have to ask this because we know that Mishima himself was like a strange character. I think it's Mishima's perception of glory. And I could be completely off, but just the way he describes it makes it feel so much more impactful than what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, like, he, like you read it, it there's, there's like lines where he's just talking about the sailor's dick and he's like, it comes up like a temple through the the massive bush, and he like goes into so much detail, and I'm like, wow. I mean, I would just say it's a dick. Like, yeah, yeah. He just describes things with so much power and intensity that it makes me feel like he sees it as glory. Well, what I want to say also to add on to that is that because he added a lot of sensory perception so much, like Mishima uh, really went into the details. Right, I think. You could also say that not only was it, uh, you know, glorious to Mishima or the Seder, but it was also glorious kind of for the kid in that uh, he was taking a lot of this risk, right? Because, like I said, a um, lot of what... 
a lot of its connotations with being useful and young is found in you know being young and exploring and if you wanted to kind of like uh abstract that part of that is um part of that involves doing something that you're not supposed to do right uh you know breaking forbidden norms right and just pioneering on that new frontier and i think so in that sense for uh the kid noboru uh there is a um uh glory in in that too right and yeah so and i think we can corroborate this from um his writing style right mishima's writing style and we can and i think the writing style and how noburu is uh very because the writing style is seen through the perspective of noburu so i think um you know seeing the intensity of all this uh situation uh is to him you know going over something that's like forbidden and there is to him a in a twisted sense glory for that is that's what i was trying to say earlier yeah so uh when i when I said I put down multiple times, I was referring to confessions because that was mm-hmm. a lot more intense than this scene. But even this scene, like, I'm pretty sure, just remembering back, like, I, it did feel overwhelmed for me. I put the book down and, like, I sat there, I thought about it because, you know, it feels so wrong. Like, just seeing it from the boy's perspective, it's just so, I mean, it's it, it's like you said, he's doing something that's totally out of the norm, breaking all shame culture. And he's just doing this insane act of, of, of intentionally trying to watch uh his his mother and sexualize her and it just it felt very wrong and i put it down it's like holy shit this is crazy and then you know i pick it up again and i i find that's a common thing with good writing where you feel so the characters feel so alive that their actions either whether they be virtuous or, or very um you know it, it, disgusting in your eyes it makes you feel something and feel so intensely that it like you know just affects how you are in the real life, like whether it's crying from a book or, or laughing out loud at a joke in a book, like it has to be well written for that to work for you to express uh, emotion on a physical level reading a book. And I find that that happens with a lot of paragraphs in, in Mishima. I agree. <clears throat> I have a few thoughts on the prose. I think it's it's very lyrical. And what you said, I, I don't remember exactly what it was, but you said something about Mishima using that florid language to showcase how glorious he thinks he it is especially at the beginning when he talks about like the dick being a uh, towering something like that but i i read the first page of the second part and i noticed that the prose changes so i don't think he sees it as glorious i think he just wants you to see the sailor as a as a child well as a 13 year old does because it, it starts to change the idea that you have of him, the, the this sort of idea of glory starts to fade away, and you see that in the prose. That's why. Well, I only read the fa- first page, but hmm. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't think about that. Huh. No, that's that's actually a very good perception because you know I I think as the as the book goes on and I I finish it, but in the second part, the boy starts to kind of ironically fall out of grace with the sailor, where he he starts to become disillusioned with his his idea and concepts of the sailor and the prose reflecting that would be very uh, a very very smart bit of writing I, I didn't notice that at all but that totally makes sense uh, I'll, I'll reread it and look for that yeah I think he, he does a really good job with changing the prose and then using certain words as well I I, I haven't I'll have to check when I read the second part but since it's summer he uses a lot of words like glistening golden sun and then he starts to change the way the way that the motive of sun starts to come up and so i was i thought it was he did well i thought it was a very good writing style to be able to just not just tell the plot but tell the tell other parts of the story through the prose and the choice of words Yeah, he he embodies the the writing and you know the the prose. It embodies the character and from the perspective of the character. I noticed that explicitly in Confessions, and not to bring up Confessions so much because obviously this is not about that. But you know, that's an, another Mishma book that I liked a, a lot. It's the my first introduction to him. But he just embodies the point of view of whatever 
or uh, character it's written from and matches the writing to that character, which is, I mean, takes a, a lot of work and a lot of understanding of his characters. Yeah, I can definitely see where you're, yeah, what you guys are talking about, right? Because at first glance, this is their twisted, twisted sense of glory, right? And whether it's Mishima's uh, sense of glory that's being transposed onto uh Nobru, or whether Nobru is like misrepresenting um, uh, Mishima's uh, glory, that that's really up to the um, reader to decide. But the point is, at first glance, this is definitely a um, depiction of what is glorious, and then we kind of see that, like you know, as the uh, story goes on, especially in the second part, which uh, we'll do soon. Right, we'll we'll make a video on we'll make a book club on that soon. Uh, that kind of glory is, as the title suggests, falling from grace, right? So, uh, it kind of helps to uh, put this whole X Y Z's glory is in the context of how you can lose it, right? And I think uh, losing the glory is very tied to, at least for the the story's case, the whole topic of lo- falling uh, from that glorious state of grace is very tied to becoming an adult in the sense that all your useful energy is kind of uh, being extinguished, right? Because, you know, anyone that knows Mishima, uh, that was what he was so scared of, right? That um, as you grow older, you can't find that glorious uh, moments, uh, for lack of a better for lack of a better word, and so I think you know what um yeah I, I think this is a great place to uh, wrap up this episode, and the next episode we can definitely talk about that whole growing up thing right, uh what is growing up to Mishima, how does Noboru see growing up, and how does he view a already grown up or yeah already fully grown person like uh, the Seder. So I think this episode, uh, it was a great one. Uh, Thanks to you guys for uh, coming on. And thank you to the uh, listeners for listening. Uh, As as you know, this this one's about glory, right? What is glory? How does it fit into the book? And then next episode, it will be about how does that glory come into conflict with growing up? So stay tuned for that one. Uh, that that video will be coming out in a few uh, days, a week's tops. Uh, like and subscribe. Uh, thank you very much.